So, hi everybody, thanks for being here. So, during the 15 next minutes, we will talk about uh, reverse engineering of communication protocols. Uh, and we will present you an open source project we started two years ago, and which, which is called NetZub. Um, and obviously, here we are here because we need some help, and especially more users and developers. So, uh, um, to begin, I want to make a quick survey uh, between you. Uh, have you ever tried to do reverse engineering of communication protocols once? Yeah, nice. <laughs> Um, and I guess it looked like this, like this. I mean, you spent many nights to uh, stare at raw hexadecimal bytes, trying to find out the meaning of each byte. It's something which is quite complex, time-consuming, and uh, mostly visual, because you you spend many nights with your uh, broken eyes. So, two years ago, we thought maybe we could. Um, try to automate some tasks, and at this time, there were no uh, avail available public tools to do reverse engineering of communication protocols. And we've started the project NetZub at this time. So, um, NetZub. Um, it's an open source tool. Um, it looks like this. When you um, capture some unknown or unspecified protocol, you put your data into NetZub here. Um, here it's the data you would like to be able to understand or to reverse the protocol which is using. And you apply some algorithm we have implemented into NetZub which allow to transform, to transform your flows into messages and fields and to align them in order to understand the semantic, their semantic and their the unknown um, attributes of the protocols. So um, there are three main goals um, for NetZub. And the first one is to allow to infer, uh, um, to infer an unknown protocol or a proprietary protocol. It also allows to simulate the protocols once you've reversed it. And finally, it allows to um, include mutations into your uh, simulations to, f to do some fuzzing for security reasons or anything you would like to do. So um, uh, NetZub is split in uh, three main parts. The first one is to um, allow to import data into NetZub. So you can import uh, some pickups, of course. You can also capture data from the network, or you can capture data from the IPC communication flows into your software. And you, once you have uh, data into NetZub, you can apply the m different algorithm provided. So, um, there are two sets of al algorithms. The first one is to allow the to do some vocabulary inference to understand the meaning of the messages. And the second part of uh, the, um, s the second set of algorithm is to um, provide some grammat grammatical inference so you can understand the um, state machine behind the protocol. Once you've understand the protocol, you can simulate it or um, play with it or export to other tools. Um, NetZub is um, implemented in Python. It uses a um, uh, GTK3 um, graphical interface and it's um, ba composed made of plugins so everyone can create a plugin and um, do his stuff with NetZub. It's free, of course. It's open source and licensed under uh, GPL v3. So um, if you want to play with it, you can get uh, the source code from GitHub or from our own repository. You can try the Python package or the pair OS uh, package we provide, like the Debian or the uh, Gentoo or Ubuntu. We also have an Arch Linux package. For there are um, lots of interesting features into NetZub. I won't be, we won't be able to <laughs> present all of them, so um, that's the, all the list of the features, but it's quite difficult. It's not very fun to explain them, so we are going to focus on some few of, of them. The message formats inference, so it's when you can understand uh, the um, fields of messages. The, um, we are going to present the relations uh, algorithm, which allow to find size fields or stuff like this, and the exporters. 
So <coughs> the first step when you do reverse engineering of communication protocols is to look at the format, uh, the format message. So uh, if we look at a standard protocol like TCP, you see that uh, TCP format, TCP header is split in different fields. So we want to be able to retrieve automatically those fields. Um, to do that, we have three, three ways. The first one is to, to do simple alignment, basic alignment. I just separate static and dynamic uh, bytes, uh, dynamic variations of bytes. The second uh, possibility, capability, is to do de delimiter-based um, partitionment or alignment. Here it's uh, interesting when you do that on a um, text protocol like uh, the, t the header of HTTP, because you have a delimiter. And the third one, which is quite interesting, is sequence alignment. Here, you try to find the optimal alignment uh, of the static part, uh, and you are able to retrieve uh, fields that have dynamic lengths. So it's interesting. <coughs> the next step is to, to regroup uh, similar messages in uh, specific groups. Um, if we take the example of TCP, you have many uh, type of messages uh, that are, uh, that, uh, are from their um, flag. Uh, and we want to do, we want to be able to automatically refer, uh, retrieve the different groups, different kind of messages or commands. So we use a clustering approach, uh, and in the clustering field, we use a UPJMA algorithm, which is taken from the bioinformatic uh, uh, domain, and we use a similarity function to uh, to compare messages, and with a clustering algorithm, we can we are able to make a group of similar messages. The third step uh, is to do uh, research operation or dependencies between fields. We, we have um, uh, relations inside uh, the same uh, header, for example, same message. We call that intra-message relations. Uh, you can also have uh, relations between messages, between sequence of messages. Here we call them inter-message relations. And the idea to retrieve automatically the dependencies, the relations, uh, is done in three steps. The first one is to generate of the possibility of the combinations of uh, values and size of values of each field. So we have lots of data to compare. And we use a correlation uh, approach to find the most, um, to find the most uh, similar ones. S s um, the relations, the more, s sorry, we try to find uh, relations with uh, an algorithm called maximal information coefficients. It's second, it's a project, uh, it's implemented in the project mine, and we are able to correlate and to find the, the <coughs> fields with the most correlation. And then we qualify the correlations, the, the results, uh, in order to find typical characteristics of uh, relations, like size field, serial serial number, cookies, uh, CRC, checksum, and so on. So it's done in three steps, uh, and it works It works pretty well. Then we are able, to, in Edzub, uh, to find environmental uh, dependencies. I mean contextual values that you can find in the environment, uh, and you can retrieve uh, inside the message format. If we take the example of TCP, you can find source port and destination port, uh, or IP address, for example, in the header of IP or TCP, and you can also find them in the in the system. If you if you make a, a NIF config, you will retrieve the IP of the underlying host. So you can look for IP inside header in, in order to retrieve the IP header or source port, for example. How do how do we do that? During uh, packet capturing, we uh, store um, characteristic of the environment. Like uh, IP address and so on, and during during the inference part, uh, we look for them inside the, the messages. So I show you, I've showed you uh, four uh, interesting, the most four interesting uh, feature of NetZub, but but you can uh, find many more, and we uh, I encourage you to look at the paper we uh, did uh, one month ago at uh, Hamburg. Okay, um, now we are going to speak about the last um, release of NetZub, which brings uh, lots of new features, interesting features, 
and most of the main features is the new exporters. So uh, once you've reversed uh, communication protocols, you would like to be able to do something with the um, model you've been able to compute. So we provide a set of exporters. Uh, you can um, include the newly reverse protocol into Wireshark, for example. So we have um, a new um, exporter plugin which generates um, a Wireshark dissector. So you can uh, create a dissector very easily for a proprietary protocol, for example, and um, after be able to, to look at it in your um, everyday uh, life. And we also provide an exporter for pitch. That's more for security and pen test and, and co. Um, it allows to generate some configuration files in order to be able to fuzz some implementations of um, proprietary protocols. It's uh, very interesting. It's, um, it, it allows to create some mutations into the vocabulary, vocabulary or um, into the grammar of the protocol so you can fuzz the state machine of the uh, unknown protocol. Um, we are very proud to release uh, during this talk the uh, NetZob um, 0.4.1 named uh, Waddling Pecari, thanks to uh, Olivier Tetard here. And um, this um, release is um, very interesting because it brings the new exporters, so I'm sure, I hope people will try it. Um, we, it, we also provide um, some management capabilities so you can save, export, import, manage your workspace and your traces. And you can also um, um, use NetZub with more stability because it's still a beta version. So uh, we fixed lots of bugs, but still some are remains. And uh, we are looking forward for more improvements like um, be being able to import data from more communication channels like USB or IOCTL or even more API hijacking of um, protocols. And we would like also to be able to s simulate protocols over those communication channels, like to be able to generate some TCP message over U USB, for example. And we are also working on new exporters like for SCAPI and for BINPAC, which is uh, very uh, famous in the academic field of uh, protocols. And if you have uh, any um, specific need, uh, please contact us. We, uh, we, will very be, we would be very happy to, to help you in creating yours. And to conclude, um, um, so we, are, um, we try to create um, a tool which will be able to help engineers or security uh, experts or uh, open source community um, based on academic works which are not available yet uh, for the common. So we try to bring the academic world to the um, more technical world. So please, if you have any feedbacks, uh, we would mm, be very ha mm, happy to, to have them. Um, we are open to any kind of contributions. Feedbacks, bug fix, um, translations, package sponsoring, for example, for Debian, if someone here is available. <laughs> um, if you have any needs, so feature proposal, um, this kind of um, helps is very um, interesting when you're working on an open source uh, community project. If you have um, any questions, uh, please. Yes. Um, will it also help me uh, reverse engineer a bitstream protocol? We, uh, you mean bits, bits field, bits? Uh, okay. Yeah. So that yeah. Uh, fields are not necessarily an uh, integer no. number of bytes. Okay. So we we don't support um, the granularity of bit field. We only support semi octet, four bit, four bits. Yeah. Uh, now, but we plan to to support bit fields in a few weeks or months, maybe. Yeah. Um, hello. Do you support um, partially encrypted packets? Uh, say the header is not encrypted, but the data is encrypted. Sorry, I think we we don't uh, really understood the question. Do you support partial partially encrypted packets? Um, 
as we as uh, George just said, we plan to support ap API hooking uh, in order to retrieve a clear text uh, flow, for example, in SSL flow. So we ju we plan to hook at uh, SSL read and SSL write uh, in order to retrieve uh, clear text. So this is in also in the in the plan in the, in the to do list. One more uh, stuff. Uh, we support transformation uh, transformation functions. So if you know the um, algorithm and the key, you can implement inside the exam, inside the uh, graphical interface uh, tr the transformation function in order to uh, uh, get the clear text inside the exam. So we we can do that. I got a quick question. So in uh, research, there's uh, a lot of well, there are some projects that look at the binary to extract the protocol. Do you have any intent to follow that same direction, or are you, do you keep focusing on the, the network traffic alone? So you're, you're talking about um, looking into the binary in order to reverse the protocol? Yes. Okay. Um, it's um, in the field of reversing communication protocols, it's the two different aspects fighting. The first one is to inspect binary, and the other one, we are... Um, we we choose is to only use passive ag approach. So we only look after the um, um, samples of uh, trace or, s or traces of the communication protocols. But I think we should not uh, split these two fields and we'll try to bring together the binary inspections and the passive analysis of um, traces. But it's going to be um, in the future. <coughs> 